Hello everyone, I hope that you are well. My name is Christiane and welcome to my channel Backpacking Bananas. I have recently returned from a backpacking trip through Thailand. I was there for two and a half months and in this video I'm going to share with you exactly how much I spent. We're going to be going into the details of where my money went, how I could have improved and how much I recommend you guys to budget on your trips to Thailand based on your own personal travel style. Because even though we might all be backpackers, budgets can vary quite a lot depending depending on preferences and interests. But no matter what your preferences and interests are, you wanna make sure that you're getting the absolute cheapest price for what you wanna do, right? Especially for accommodation, the price of the same accommodation can vary massively depending on what site you book it on. It can take a lot of time and effort going through the multiple search engines, making sure that you're getting the cheapest price and even then, you're not even entirely sure if you are getting the cheapest price. Many people don't even bother to shop around and end up paying a higher price unnecessarily. But I wouldn't want you guys to struggle with any of that, which is why I would like to introduce you to RatePunk, who are kindly the sponsors of today's video. RatePunk are a browser extension that scans all the main booking sites and runs a live comparison on the same hotel. And it's completely free to download. No signups, no commitment, no catches. It's just a simple, really cool new tool that's going to save you a lot of time and money and give you confidence that you're definitely going to be getting the best deal on your accommodation when booking on your next trip. RatePunk is coded to pop up in seconds every time you choose a hotel and wish to see prices for it on all major booking websites and there's no extra steps to do after the extension is installed on your laptop. Every time it will just start working automatically. You don't even need to change your booking habits at all. You can browse your wanted hotel on booking.com, Expedia, Agoda, whichever your favorite website is and once you choose your hotel RatePunk will appear on your laptop screen comparing the price with all the other websites. So no more having millions of tabs open attempting to compare the prices yourself. The rates are shown side by side in one convenient list with the cheapest offer at the top and it always shows the final price. It's not going to change once you click on the cheapest offer link. RatePunk only work with trusted and reliable online travel agencies that are known worldwide. It is available to download on all major browsers, Chrome, Safari, etc. And of course, like I mentioned before, it's completely free. So you really have nothing to lose. And currently there is no other tool of its kind so you'll be the first. You can click the link in the description to take you to the download link and start saving money on your accommodation immediately. I wish I had rate punk before I traveled to Thailand because maybe these rates would be a little bit lower. But here we go let me share with you exactly how much I spent in 2.5 months backpacking Thailand or 74 days to be exact. I just want to say that I initially budgeted 900 pounds per month for this trip which would mean that in 74 days I I shoulda, woulda, coulda have spent 2,250 pounds. But let's see what I actually ended up spending. Can I have a drum roll, please? In 74 days in Thailand, I spent 2,898 pounds. Awesome. So yes, I did very much go over budget for this trip. But let's take a deep dive into what happened, where exactly my money went, and what the big budget breakdown actually looked like. So I've split up all of my costs into my first 30 days, my second 30 days, and my final 14 days. So we can have a look at how all of this varies. In my first 30 days, I spent 923 pounds. So that's not too far over budget. In my second 30 days I spent £966, also not outrageously over budget, and in my final 14 days I spent £1,010, and that ladies and gentlemen, is where things seemingly got a little bit out of hand. But I believe that there are three very good reasons for this, which I will get into, so make sure you keep watching to find out. So the first breakdown is having a look at how much I spent on accommodation. So in 74 days, I spent £678 on accommodation. So this averages out to be about £9 per day. When I was traveling with Jeremy, we would split private rooms in hostels that were always very nice. And when I went solo, on this trip, I would normally stay in hostel dorm beds that were also very nice. I definitely am on the higher end of the backpacker budget when it comes to my accommodation. I like to stay in the nicest hostels for the most part. In Thailand, you could budget five pounds per day for accommodation in a hostel dorm room and still be very comfortable because you can nearly always find something for this price. As for travel, and this is just my internal travel in Thailand, so not including my international flights, in 74 days, I spent 470 79 pounds. 109 pounds on three internal flights, 20 pounds on taxis and grabs, 
80 pounds on buses, vans and trains, 126 pounds on ferries and boats, and 145 pounds on scooter rentals and fuel. So this is an average of six pound 50 per day on travel and transport. To be honest, I don't think that there is anything that I could have really done differently about this. Most days of this trip, I would rent a scooter. It costs around five pounds per day to do this. And I think it's just the best way to explore. Obviously, if you are always sharing with another person, that would be two pound 50 per day, making your costs lower. As for food and drink, in 74 days, I spent £1,007 in total with an average of £13.60 per day. And I've split this up into eating out coffee and alcohol because I think that that's all important to note. Uh, so I spent £705 eating out, which is an average of £9.50 per day. I ate a mix of both local food and street food and in Western restaurants as well. If you ate entirely local food, you could easily budget £5 a day for this. But personally, I like the mix, especially when traveling for a long time. I spent £88 on coffee, which is an average of £1.20 per day, mainly on iced caramel lattes. If you're not someone who likes takeaway coffees or drinks on the regular, this is probably not an expense to concern you at all. And finally, I spent £214 on alcohol with an average of £2.90 per day. I am a social drinker. I didn't really have any big binges on this trip other than the full moon party and and my night out on Bangla Road in Phuket. But the thing is, when I do drink, I prefer to have a glass of wine or a cocktail as opposed to a beer. So this does make my alcohol spending higher than what it would be if I only drank beer. But of course, if you are not an alcohol drinker, this is not an expense that you would need to factor in. But on the other hand, if you consider yourself to be a big drinker, I would definitely budget more than what I have. As for sports, activities and tours, uh, excluding scuba diving, in 74 days, I spent a total of 260 pounds. My three day, two night trekking tour in Chiang Mai cost 80 pounds. A day trip to Antong National Park costs 45 pounds. My half day professional rock climbing excursion in Riley cost 23 pounds. Pounds. Two weeks of unlimited Muay Thai and CrossFit training at Super Pro Gym and Koh Samui cost £90. So those are a few of my examples to go off. A very common thing to do in Thailand is to get your open water scuba diving license in Koh Tao. This costs around £230 if you use my code to get 10% off at La Bombona Diving School in Koh Tao. I'll have a link to that offer in the description. And in terms of everything else, I spent a total of £14 on massage and spa experiences. It costs an average of £7 for an hour long Thai massage, often even cheaper. I spent a total of 34 pounds on entrance fees into various places and national parks. I spent 21 pounds in SIM cards. You shouldn't be paying more than eight pounds or so on a SIM card for the month in Thailand, which should give you at least 20 gigs of data. I spent 91 pounds on visa extensions. I extended my visa twice with the COVID extension program. I spent five pounds in total on laundry. It normally costs around one pound per kilo at most laundry services in Thailand. In my opinion, this is not a big expense, but you can obviously save that money if you decided to hand wash your own clothing. And I spent 44 pounds in total at the supermarket on snacks, on water, on toiletries, general groceries. Obviously that's not a whole lot to spend in two and a half months in Thailand. But a big reason for that is it's so affordable to eat out in Thailand. And you don't really need to buy groceries to cook. A lot of the hostels don't even have kitchens. So realistically, you're just not gonna be spending that much on groceries. So Christiane, why did you spend so much more in your final two weeks in Thailand compared to the first two months of your trip? Well, there's actually three reasons, but the main one being scuba diving. I became a little scuba obsessed in my last two weeks in Thailand and spent a total of 265 pounds on fun dives. 140 of that was on two dives in Richelieu Rock departing from Khao Lek. This was a particularly expensive dive trip because the speedboat had to travel a really long way to get to the dive site. And it was a particularly incredible dive site and had quite an expensive national marine park fee. I spent about 65 pounds doing two fun dives in Koh Phi Phi and around 65 pounds doing two fun dives in Koh Lipe. So as you can see, scuba diving is an expensive activity in the grand scheme of things. However, it is cheaper to go scuba diving in Thailand than in many other places in the world. So if it is something that you are wanting to try out, Thailand is definitely a good place to do it. But still, compared to all of the other activities in Thailand, scuba diving is definitely one of the most expensive. So I always calculate it separately to the rest of my budget as an additional expense. Also, 
although it's an activity that not everyone does, so it doesn't make sense for everyone to have to factor it in. So as well as scuba diving, there are two more things that contributed to me spending more in my final two weeks in Thailand. Firstly was the region that I was in. I spent my first 30 days in Northern Thailand and Koh Samui. I spent my second 30 days in Koh Phangan, Koh Tao and Khao Sok. And I spent my final two weeks on the West Coast of Thailand in locations like Phuket, Koh Phi Phi, Koh Li Pei. And this region of Thailand I found to simply be more expensive than the others. And I believe it's because it's just more touristy. At least that is what I gathered. In general, the restaurants are more expensive, the ferries are more expensive, the activities are more expensive, the accommodation is more expensive, and I found there to be less room for negotiation. And secondly, I was solo backpacking in my last two weeks of Thailand, as opposed to the first seven weeks of my trip where I was traveling with a partner and we shared the cost of a lot of things. We shared the daily scooter rental and fuel. We would share private room accommodation. We could share on taxis and private transport. When you're solo traveling, unless you are splitting the costs with new people that you have met on your trip, I often find that I do spend a little bit more because you are covering everything yourself. So that's me. But what does all of this information mean for you? And how much should you budget for your own trips to Thailand? Good question. Now this obviously is going to depend on a few factors, but the main factor being what type of backpacker you are. So firstly, we have the budget backpacker. You want to spend the absolute minimum while still getting to explore the country. You will stay in the cheapest, most basic accommodation. You will stick to the cheaper activities. You will always eat local food. You won't drink much alcohol or at the very least you will stick to the cheapest beers. And you will always choose the most cost efficient transport method to get yourself around. For you, my beautiful budget backpackers, I recommend budgeting £500 per month. It is totally totally possible to backpack Thailand on this budget, but it really is the minimum and it will be easier to achieve the slower that you travel. On the other end of the spectrum, we have the flash packers. You like to stay in the nicest hostels in town. You may stay in a private room every now and again. You don't hold back on activities. You will mostly eat in higher end or Western style restaurants and cafes. You won't hold back on the bevies when you want them. And you will normally opt for the most convenient transport method, even if it's not the cheapest. For you, my beautiful flash packers, I would recommend budgeting £1,200 per month. This should be an incredibly comfortable backpacker budget in Thailand. And again, even more comfortable if you are traveling slowly. But this is of course a spectrum. You've seen the two extremes, uh, but the average backpacker will probably find themselves somewhere in the middle of these two styles. They like a mix of the local cuisine and Western style restaurants. They like a bevy, but won't go overboard with expensive drinks. They appreciate a nice hostel but are happy to go with a cheaper one from time to time. They want to do the majority of activities and will do all of the popular things on offer. For you, my beautiful average backpackers, I recommend budgeting £850 per month. That is smack bang in the middle of our Thailand backpacker budget spectrum and of course it will be more easily achieved the slower you travel. So where do I fit onto this spectrum? If I were to take away my scuba diving costs, in 74 days I would have spent £2,633 pounds, which is about 35 pounds per day. Times that by 30 and it gives us an average monthly total of 1,050 pounds. So I, backpacking bananas, am somewhere in the middle between an average backpacker and a flashpacker, which I would say is certainly accurate for me and my style of travel. I don't hold back on activities. I like to stay in the nicest hostels. However, I'm not afraid of the super cheap ones from time to time. I would mostly eat an international cuisine, but also would quite often opt for local food or street food as well. I find that the older I get, the bigger my budget gets, not just because I feel like I'm more financially stable to afford it, but also I just appreciate comfort a little bit more. So anyway, I really hope you enjoyed this video and it has helped you plan out your own budget for backpacking Thailand. And to be honest, no matter what your budget is in Thailand, I'm sure you will have a fantastic time because it's just an amazing country. I love it so much. It's 100% one of my favorites. If you enjoyed this video or found it useful, I would love it if you gave it a thumbs up because it really helps to support my channel and subscribe if you haven't already for more backpacking budget videos like this. And I will see you guys in the next one. Bye bye.